Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Yuqi. Um, I'm really happy to be here today. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, 20 tools and techniques that you can use to make yourself more uh, productive. Um, let me talk about myself. Um, this is me again. Um, I'm on the Ruby code team. I maintain a gem called Kaminari, which is a Rails paginator. Um, I'm the creator of the Digimin gem, and basically what it does is, um, if, it, if you have any typos in the, in the method, then it tries to suggest, suggest to you what it should be. So it, it is basically the collect before Ruby. So someone, someone calls, <laughs> someone calls <laughs> its gem the collect before Ruby. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, I work for a company called Pivotal. Uh, we have offices in Singapore, Sydney, and Tokyo. Um, so if you are in interested in working at Pivotal, uh, just let me know. <laughs> um, going back to the main topic, um, before I really start, uh, I'm going to speak really fast. So I'm going to upload the slides later so you can take a look at uh, the slides later. OK, the first one is actually, actually from the Digimi Jam. Um, if you install Digimin 1.0.2, you can require uh, Digimin Experimental, which enables um, Digimin's experimental features. Uh, let's take a look at this example, which is um, uh, there's a typo in the instance variable name, and what's going to happen is Ruby tries to call a method on nil, so you get an error. But if you require Digimin Experimental, um, it tries to find the right, correct um, instance variable name for you. Um, Let's also take a look at this, this example. Um, you have a hash, and you want to get a value out of it. And there's a title in the key name, and you get a key, key error. But again, if you require Digimin Experimental, um, it, it will try to um, correct the wrong um, key name for you. Um, another, another example would be something like this. Um, notice there's a typo in the word initialize. And this is tricky because you define the method called initialize, and what you really call is new. So it's really hard to realize that there's a typo. But if you enable uh, Digimin Experimental, it will display a warning. So it's going to be a little easier for you to notice that there's a typo. OK, number four, uh, bundle of config gels. Um, it allows you to install gems in parallel using threads. Um, by default, it is set to one. and Let's say if you want to install about 200 gems, and it takes about two, uh, three minutes, actually. Uh, but if you set it to like 610, it only takes 30 minutes, which is a lot faster. Uh, the next one is uh, making a request on Rails console. Uh, if you are on Rails console, you can actually make a fake request to the controller by saying after get uh, path. Uh, you can also say um, after post or after delete. So this is really handy if you want to process a controller action. OK, the next one is power search. Um, let's say you have a task and that's failing, and you don't know what's going on. And what it does is uh, it displays um, description of social messages for you. So this is really useful if you have a mysterious failure in your tests. There's also a JavaScript implementation. So if you have a JavaScript uh, project, you should definitely consider using this too. The next one is a, is a watch command. It executes a command uh, periodically. Uh, let's take a look at this example. Uh, on the right side, I'm running break test, and there's a failing test. And on the left side, I'm going to change a file and save it. And in the watch command, we run break test. And I and then here now you can see green. Um, usually, you, I have to stop Emacs and I go back to the terminal and run the test. But if you use watch, you don't have to do that, uh, which is great. OK, the next one is a new thing of uh, git diff. Uh, this is actually a new, uh, uh, new thing that uh, came out last week, um, which is called compaction heuristics. Um, I think you've seen something like example on the right side, uh, which is quite not right. But if you set compaction heuristics to true, then the git will be a little, a little smarter to display uh, diffs. The next one is Rails expansion. Um, I think you've. Uh, uh, most of you know that uh, you can use uh, you can move a file by using um, MV, but you can also use something like this to move a file, which is a little shorter. This is called Brass expansion, and you can also use uh, this with a lot more commands like CP. The next one is history. Um, terminal actually remembers um, the command that you ran before. So if you said history, then it displays all the commands you ran before. And here you can see some numbers. And what you can do with them is that to run a specific command that is associated to that number. You can also say uh, bam bam to run the last command that you just run, like this. 
And uh, sometimes you don't really remember uh, the whole command, but if you, if you only remember the first or second character, you can say uh, control R. Uh, in this example, I'm trying to run break test something, 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 which I don't really remember, but, but, I, just, uh, but I just have to hit control R and hit break, and then the terminal will give me the, the right command that I, that I would like to run. The next one is three. It's like LOS, but it also displays in the directory tree. Uh, so, it, so if you don't know what's inside the directory, this is really handy. You can also find a file if you use it uh, with uh, grep. The next one is aging. Uh, it's a code searching tool. Uh, similar to ACK, but it's a lot faster. Um, here I'm trying to find files which, which have um, the word literal. Um, and the result looks like uh, pretty much the same as uh, what uh, act provides, but it's actually a lot faster than act. So if you think act is slow, then you should definitely consider using uh, AG. The next one is HTTP Pi. It's a, it is basically a very personal curl. Uh, like let's say I make a request to Ruby Gems, and you get a result like this, which is not really readable. Uh, but if you replace curl with HTTP, then it, it will predefine the JSON, so it's, it's going to be a lot easier to read the JSON. But sometimes uh, you don't want to install uh, HTTP Pi because it's a Python implementation, and you don't want to install Python just to be able to see JSON. And that's why JQ command comes really, really handy. Um, <coughs> so how can we use it? Um, you make a curl request, and you can just pass, you can just pipe the result to JQ. And it will just pretty file the JSON result for you. And what's nice about, what's nice about this is that uh, if you want to know what's inside dependencies development, it will just uh, filter the results. So if you have a really, really JSON result, um, you don't have to like uh, scroll down to the bottom. You can just say JQ, like this array, or and this property, something like that. So it's really useful. The next one is pigment types, which is a syntax highlighter written in Python. Um, I used to use more before, but it's not really p pretty. So um, I started using pigment types. So if you use it, um, it colorizes what's inside the file. So it's going to be a lot easier to read. And I have this alias on my personal computer. So, if you, uh, so I don't have to think about uh, what client I should be using to display uh, colorized results. So it's going to be like this. Um, sometimes you go to Stack Overflow or Server Files and then you copy and paste the command, but you don't know really what's, what it's really doing. Um, in that case, you can just go to explainshell.com and pass that command, and hopefully it's going to explain uh, what it actually does. It has a, it's not actually 100% uh, smart, so sometimes it doesn't work. Then it, this is an open source project, so if you think you can improve, then you can just go to GitHub and send a pull request. The last one is shift it. Um, sometimes you want to see you want to see two windows side by side, but it's a little hard to adjust uh, windows manually. And what it does is, if you hit a uh, certain command, it will position the window on the right or left, on the bottom or bottom uh, or, or top. So it's really useful if you want to see uh, two things um, side by side. Okay, that's the 20 tails. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs>